Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is disease of the liver where fat is deposited into the liver and that leads to scarring of the liver, fibrosis of the liver, and potentially liver cancer. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has multiple hypothesized causes and there isn't one that has been teased out to say that is the major one. Recent research in 2019 though has found a gut link to non-alcoholic fatty li liver disease, specifically a certain bacterial strain that produces alcohol and produces non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in people that don't drink alcohol, hence non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So if you're someone with fatty liver disease and you don't know where it came from because you eat a good diet and you don't drink alcohol, this may be your cause in your case. Let's dive into the research today. So here we are with some graphics from a couple different research studies explaining non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and the gut contribution to it. Now there have been many studies looking at obesity, high fat diets, insulin resistance, and metabolic syndrome as contributors to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But this is the first study to find a causal link or to uh, a, a strong association, a strong correlation between gut dysbiosis with a specific strain of bacteria and the resultant fatty liver disease. And what these researchers did was they took a patient that had autobrewery syndrome. And what autobrewery syndrome is, is classically, it's yeast overgrowth in a person's GI tract, and the yeast ferment sugar into ethanol, making the person drunk. They're, it's an autobrewery, the yeast in their gut is brewing alcohol, and that person may get pulled over and blow a DUI, and they've never had a drink that night. Well, the authors in this study had a patient with autobrewery syndrome that didn't respond to antifungal medication. If it was caused by yeast, then the antifungals should have killed the yeast and the patient should have responded. That did not happen. And what the authors found was this person's autobrewery syndrome and fatty liver was being driven by bacterial overgrowth with a specific bacterial strain called Klebsiella pneumoniae that was a high alcohol producer. So the Klebsiella was producing ethanol or alcohol in this person's gut, and that was leading to fat deposition in the person's liver and also autobrewery syndrome or the person was drunk due to endogenous alcohol production, not exogenous consumption. The authors were very intrigued by this, so they took samples of this person's bacteria, the high alcohol pr uh, producing Klebsiella, and they then took them to a cohort of 42 fatty liver uh, disease patients and compared them and looked for those same bacteria in those patients. And what they did was, or what they found was that over 60% of those patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease had the same high producing and moderate producing Klebsiella and pneumoniae strains in their GI tract. The authors went a step further and said, let's try and prove this as a causal mechanism. So they took those high, produ high alcohol producing Klebsiella and pneumoniae strains from that auto brewery patient and they fed it to germ-free mice without liver disease. And what they found was when they fed those bacteria to those germ-free mice and then gave them glucose or fructose, gave them carbohydrate, those germ-free mice that now had high alcohol producing Klebsiella pneumoniae in their guts, when given carbohydrates, those bacteria metabolize those carbohydrates into alcohol and the alcohol led to fatty liver disease in the mice. They said, okay, that seems to be causal. What if we transplant the bacteria from this autobrewery patient into the mice, but first kill off the high alcohol producing Klebsiella pneumoniae? They did that and the mice did not develop fatty liver. 
the mice had every other bacterial strain from this patient except the Klebsiella, and they did not develop fatty liver. So these results suggest that high alcohol producing Klebsiella pneumoniae is the strain that causally drives non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in mice, and it's highly associated and correlated with the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in at least 60% of the patients in their studied cohort. So if you are a person with fatty liver and you're not a heavy drinker and you are not insulin resistant, then perhaps gut dysbiosis is the reason for your non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And more specifically, perhaps you have high alcohol producing Klebsiella pneumoniae. How would that be happening in you? Well, this is a picture of our gut over here on the right. And what happens is you, if you have intestinal permeability or leaky gut or, or GI barrier dysfunction for any reason, you could have dysbiosis and overgrowth of Klebsiella pneumoniae that then enters the portal circulation uh, and, and they could themselves enter the portal circulation. Their pro-inflammatory lipopolysaccharide metabolites could enter it, driving pro-inflammatory cytokine production, which leads to liver inflammation and could lead to liver damage, liver scarring. And that same GI dysbiosis can promote increased production of adipocytes or fat cells in the GI, and those fat cells produce pro-inflammatory cytokines and more free fatty acids that then travel into the liver via the portal circulation and deposit in the liver, causing fatty liver disease. So this study is showing the mechanism by which it could happen. That's a 2014 study. This is a 2019 study showing in human beings it actually happening. So again, Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has multiple possible causes. If you're someone that doesn't fit the more well-known causes, such as high, uh, high sugar diet, insulin resistance, et cetera, and you're not a drinker, then perhaps GI dysbiosis, specifically with Klebsiella species, is the cause in your case. If that is the case, then you need to address the causes, which would be overgrowth of bad bacteria, potentially undergrowth of probiotic species. If you have intestinal permeability or loss of barrier integrity, you need to improve that or eliminate the leaky gut and decrease GI inflammation and clean up diet if that's a piece as well. So a functional medicine practitioner could walk you through these steps. They could first discover, is this going on? in you and then help you address whatever physiologic abnormalities they find when looking under your hood. I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I partner with people every day to do things like this. This is my passion and if you'd like to partner with me, check me out at functionalmedicinecharlotte.com.